Hi friends and welcome back. This is the Prepared Suburbanite. I recently got a comment on kind of an older video. Uh, it's probably a couple of years old, but here's the comment. As you obviously are not a spring chicken, could you please elaborate on how you can live remotely and be able to do all the work required to live that way? I am interested to start myself, but am concerned about my age and health. Thank you. Well, thank you for the cool comment, and it really did, I've been thinking about it for a couple of days. This has been uh, uh, sitting um, in my comment section and my uh, YouTube channel, and uh, trying to figure out exactly where this person may be coming from. So let me give it a shot, see if you agree, be interested to get your feedback in the comments down below. So stick around. Well, to start with, um, the spring chicken comment, I don't know, um, maybe it's the gray hair here and stuff, but uh, you're right, I'm not a spring chicken. Um, been around for quite a long time, been retired for, uh, it'll be uh, five, it'll be six years um, in about two weeks. So it's been a while and it's been a wonderful experience being retired. I don't necessarily live remotely. I do live in a suburban community um, in Wake County, North Carolina. I don't have livestock. I don't have chickens. I don't raise goats, um, anything like that. But I do have um, quite a lot of things that keep me very, very busy. We garden a lot. We. Um, provide stewardship, I guess, to the wooded lots that we're on here in um, this little development that we live in. And it's been an awful lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. Now, I'm not 100% sure exactly where the commenter's um, frame of reference is. Um, I, I think there may be an assumption in there that uh, we're living way out in some mountain in uh, um, upper Vermont or in Colorado or someplace like that where there's you know not another person around for 15 or 20 miles and that's just not the case. Um, we live in a community um, it, it, it just not too far outside the city limits and you know there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people around here um, the local supermarket is about a mile and two-tenths away. Um, that's the closest one. Uh, there's probably seven or eight supermarkets within a um, five-mile radius of, of my house here. So, um, yeah, we're not remote. We're not remote. But there is a lot of work required to stay up with all the things that need to be done. Now, based on that assumption and thinking that um, maybe this commenter is one to maybe go off grid or um, maybe living in a very rural area um, or contemplating moving to a very rural area, um, I can understand the um, trepidation, uh, the fear, the fear of the unknown maybe. Um, if you're um, getting up there in age, um, as we all do, we don't get any younger, we certainly get older every day. Um, but the bottom line is, there's a number of considerations that you've really got to measure for yourself. J.J. Johnson, who has a YouTube channel called Reality Survival and Prepping, generally closes every one of his videos with the six P's. And those six P's are proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. And he hit the nail right on the head because that concept fits this video response 
to this commenter. The first couple of things that popped into my head was, well, what are the tasks that you are contemplating having to perform every day or every week or whatever it is that you're thinking about, whether it's raising chickens, um, building a barn, um, doing gardening, um, automobile maintenance, um, storeroom preparation for, for your preps. Um, not quite sure exactly what you need to be doing. So the first thing is the plan. So you should really be planning on what it is that you want to accomplish and set goals. You can set goals the way we did when I was uh, in business. Um, you define the issue, you put some parameters around it, not to exceed, you get some cost estimates, you get some time estimates, and you set a goal based on those variables and say, okay, I'm going to build a new shed and it's going to take uh, a thousand dollars and I'm going to do the work myself and I want to get it done by X date and so now you've got a plan the next part of that is the preparation part do you have all the right tools do you have a blueprint do you know how much lumber you're going to need to build your shed or build your garden or repair your vehicle or purchase a, a, a three month or a six month supply of food? Whatever your goal is, do you have the right tools? Have you done all the right research on making sure that you understand exactly what it is that you're getting into? and? Um, once you do that and you've got your plan set in your mind anyway, then you've got to examine the preparation and performance. Now the preparation part, um, that can be, it's obviously going to be dependent on what your project is or what your overall goal is or what the individual goal may be. So if you're, if you're looking to do a very specific thing, part of your preparation has to be the research into it. it has to, uh, you have to make sure you've got the right tools to do whatever it is that you're setting out to do. And you want to make sure you've got the skills to be able to do it the right way. Now the right way and the right tools um, you're going to save yourself an awful lot of time and trouble. But if you don't know the right way, or you're unsure if part of your project is to, you know, install a new sink, uh, is to uh, um, run electrical this way or that way, you, you may end up having to do some research. So you can use the internet, you can use YouTube, you can go to your local library, you can consult experts. You can consult friends that may have experience doing whatever it is that you want to do so that you can glean some knowledge from them, get some um, recommendations for the right kind of tools, where to start, how to, how to start, what kind of trouble you're going to get into, where the, um, the project can fall off the tracks, that kind of a thing. So you need to be all that, that's, that's the planning and preparation stage. Now, in order to get there, I think one of, the, one of the things that first popped into my head is you've got to be pretty much debt free or you've got to have enough disposable income to be able to afford to do some of the things that you want to set out to do. If you're going to build a, a 12 by 16 shed, you're going to need a couple thousand bucks. And if you don't have the right tools, and you're going to have to buy hammers and nails and saws and saw horses and um, plywood and roofing material and all that, um, it, you're going to have to set aside some bucks to be able to actually afford to do that. And if you're, if you're not debt free or you don't have the kind of disposable income available or the savings available to be able to draw that money right out and take care of it, um, I would not recommend going into debt to build a shed. 
or to do anything around your home unless it's a huge, huge um, repair, I guess. And if it's not covered by insurance, you may have to replace your roofing. You may have to replace your siding. You may have to put in uh, a new window, uh, fix a rotted door jam, those kinds of things that, that you're going to need to uh, um, have some funds available to do that with. So I wouldn't recommend that anybody um, go borrow money or go use their charge card um, and pay monthly payments doing that. I would recommend that if you're thinking about living remotely, on grid or off grid, that you get as debt free as possible and that you've got disposable income and savings available to you so that you can pull off whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. The next um, thought that I've got, I think, is, is your physical fitness, your physical shape. Um, I know that once I passed over retirement age, that I just don't have the, um, the strength and stamina that I had when I was 35 or 40. Um, it's a whole different ball game when you're, uh, when you're uh, not a spring chicken anymore. Um, you get tired quicker. You uh, fatigue easily. Um, you may start losing bone mass. You're going to be not as strong as you were when you were 35 or 40 years old. So you're not going to be able to lift heavy things and uh, do that kind of stuff. You're not going to have the stamina to be putting in 10, 12, 14 hour days working on a project to get it done. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't get yourself in shape to do that. Um, I know that when, when I was working, I, I was a desk jockey. I was a financial executive and you know, my day was, was sitting behind a desk. Uh, going to meetings was about the only exercise that I got in my job. And that was a matter of you know either getting in the car and driving to a meeting house or um, walking across the campus to uh, um, go to a different conference room and that was that was about it. Uh, weekends were you know there was a little bit of activity here and there but um, you know I, I was putting in uh, 50 60 hours a week uh, working and weekends for me were just like trying to catch up <laughs> trying to uh, store up a little bit of extra sleep <laughs> if that's even possible so um, I was horribly out of shape, and I can remember uh, uh, having a picture taken when uh, we set out to go on vacation one particular year, and I just couldn't believe what I looked like. Uh, so but since I've retired, I have lost probably 35 or 40 pounds. I feel like I'm stronger now than I was when I retired. I've got um, the, about the same stamina now as I did when I retired six years ago. But that leads me to the next point is know your limits. As we get older um, we don't have the stamina, we don't have the, the strength in your arms and your back and your legs, you tire easy, um, that kind of stuff. It can be dangerous if you put your, push yourself too hard. So know your limits. Um, as I grew older, I, I can remember when I when I first started uh, working, I was doing uh, um, construction work, um, home remodeling and stuff like that when I first started uh, back in my early 20s. And um, it was nothing for me to be, you know, hanging on a 40-foot ladder, putting roofing on, carrying uh, uh, bundles of uh, uh, shingles and siding up a, up a ladder, and bouncing around on a roof and all that kind of stuff. Um, believe me, it ain't the same when you get this much gray hair. Um, you do have to know your limits. So that's one big consideration. Once you've gone through all that um, self-assessment, I guess, you need to really look at, do you have the right kind of resources available to you 
to accomplish what it is that you want to accomplish. Do you have friends that are bricklayers, that are carpenters, that are electricians or plumbers, if you don't know how to do that kind of work, that you could tap into them and maybe they could come over and help you, show you how, teach you. So you may be able to benefit from um, those kinds of acquaintances, uh, folks that live in your neighborhood, that uh, go to your church, that kind of a thing. You may be able to tap into their expertise and learn something or have them just volunteer to help you out. Uh, does happen quite a, quite a bit. I know that when I've been stuck in a situation where I just didn't possess the, um, uh, the right stuff at that particular point in time, um, I had to reach out to folks. Um, when we put the uh, awning up on our new deck, um, it's, it weighs 120 pounds and it's 14 feet long. Um, I couldn't do it by myself. It was just, you know, it's 14 feet long. You can get one end of it up. I couldn't quite get the other end of it up. So I called a friend of mine. He said, yeah, I can stop by in the morning. Yeah. So he came over. I was on one ladder. He was on the other. And in a minute, we were done. It was up. So it was that simple. And it was just a quick phone call. So that's the kind of stuff that, that uh, having a circle of friends, people that you can count on, can come in real handy. That's the volunteer aspect. You may be able to be in a position where you've got enough available cash to hire a contractor to come in and build your shed or hire a, a, a local uh, group to come in and do your uh, uh, siding project on your house or um, put the roof on or whatever it is, whatever your project is. You may be able to find um, available help if you're, if you're raising cattle or if you're raising uh, chickens and stuff like that. Folks that can uh, um, help you out with those kind of chores on a daily basis. But you may have to pay them. You may have to give them some money to do that. So you, that's why I think it's very important to be as debt free and have as much disposable income as possible. So the hired help thing that, you know, um, there's this brand new deck that we put in this spring. Yeah, I could have probably um, hacked away at it and got it done. But getting the building permits, making sure that you've got the, uh, uh, that you're up to the specifications for getting the right kind of building permits and uh, passing inspections and stuff like that. Um, I've been using a local contractor uh, for those kinds of projects off and on for the last 10 or 15 years. And very reliable, cost effective, excellent, excellent work. He's got a great team. They came in here, took out the old deck, put on the new deck, and you know, it was done in a week. It was absolutely wonderful. And yeah, I could have done it myself. It would have cost a lot more. I would have been absolutely out of shape to do that kind of work. Um, there was a lot of, there was a couple of good young bucks that were working on this thing, that were here early in the morning, that stayed until the job got done that day, and made sure that it was right. That passed inspection the first time through. In fact, the the inspector said, "Wow, those guys did a great job." But that's um, pretty good stuff. But it was worth it to me to hire a contractor to do that kind of a involved project. So it's a consideration. Now I don't know where that um, commenter was really coming from. We never get any younger. We always get older every single day. And if you're concerned at this point in your life that you may have passed that uh, point of prime to be able to accomplish a lot of the, the kind of work that you need to do, then you may have to change your overall plans. You may have to re-examine what you want to do for the rest of your life or how you want to approach the rest of your life. 
Well, I do hope that you found my thoughts somewhat helpful, that you need to now examine what goals it is that you are trying to achieve. Put some of these thoughts and comments together. Re-examine where you are. Do the things that you need to do to get the job done. And my heart goes out to you. Hanging tough out there. May God be with you all the way. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you all to be prepared always. And I'll see you all on the next video.